everybody and welcome to another episode of Let Me Learn Ya. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to reach your ridiculous New Year's resolutions using science. Listen, we've all made goals where we're like, we're totally gonna do this. We tell all our friends, we're super pumped about it. And then we blink three months later and we're like, wait, but what the frick just happened? And we can actually track this happening with human beings every year when it comes to New Year's because gym memberships go up, sales for weight loss programs go up. And this is because we all think, hey, new me, new year, fresh start. This happened to me every freaking semester in college where I was an absolute mess by the end of the semester. Nothing was organized, papers everywhere. And I'd start a new semester with my new binder and my little post-it notes and my, my color coding. But every single time, 16 weeks later, I looked like that lady from Labyrinth that basically was made out of trash. But what if I were to tell you that you can increase your likelihood of completing a goal by as much as 40% just by doing four simple steps? Today, you are going to learn how to make a goal in a way that sets you up for success in four easy steps. You guys ready? You guys ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. What song is that? I'm on TikTok too much, you guys. Oh my God. Step one, make a SMART goal. These SMART goals were developed to help employees and managers and yada yada meet goals so that the business could be more financially successful per usual. Usually I do not pay attention to or listen to business bros in any way, shape or form, but there's actually something to these SMART goals. They're very easy to remember and they use very reasonable logical principles that can help somebody reach their goal. SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. First off, let's start with specific. This is one of the biggest problems that many of us make when trying to make a goal. Now, I'm just going to be talking about health goals because I am a dietitian, but these can be applied to any type of goal that you want to make. In the past, I would say, I wanna lose weight, or I wanna eat healthier, or I wanna be more fit. These are just statements that are so not specific that I can't technically reach towards them, measure my progress, and find out if I'm even successful. Instead of me saying, I want to be healthier in the new year, I could say, I want to add one serving of vegetables to every meal. Boom, it is something that I can, leading on to the next part of SMART, measure. If I was specific and said, I want to add a serving of vegetables to every meal, that is measurable. And if I choose, I can layer on other things to measure. Let's just say one of the reasons why I want to add more vegetables is because they're higher in fiber because I can't poop to save my life. That's not true because I can. So don't worry about me, you guys, okay? That could be another thing I measure. I could measure adherence. Am I adding one serving of vegetables to every meal? And I could also measure What's my gut situation like? Am I still pooping once every two weeks? Is it getting easier? And it's good to measure these things because then you can tell if you're being successful or not. The next part of SMART is achievable and this is very important. So let's just say it was 2000s Lana who worked at an insanely crazy startup company and I was working 80 hour weeks and I was literally just eating takeout and I made the goal, I'm gonna make my meals from scratch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's how I'm gonna be healthy. There is no way somebody working 80 hour weeks who is basically living at the office is going to be able to suddenly have enough time and energy and mental capacity to plan an entire week's worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner to shop for all of those meals, to prep them, clean them, you, you get it, okay? It's probably not gonna happen and I'm setting myself up for failure. If you're planning on losing 30 pounds before Aunt Selma's freaking wedding, you're setting yourself up for failure. You will be less likely to want to set and achieve more goals. So we need to make sure that this goal is achievable so you are setting yourself up for success. You can do it! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, achievable easy. 
Now the R in SMART usually stands for relevant. I think this is kind of redundant with the whole achievable thing. So I kind of say, forget that one. We're changing SMART to SMAPT. So the R being changed to a P stands for personal for me. That goal has to be personal for you. If you are making a weight loss goal, ask yourself why. Are you making that weight loss goal because you think people are gonna think you're more attractive or more acceptable or you're trying to fit with some unrealistic, stupid, ridiculous standard that some moron set in their freaking basement in their mom's house? Or are you trying to lose weight because you were just diagnosed with prediabetes and you know that losing 5% of your body weight, specifically fat, let's be honest, will reduce your risk of developing diabetes. Do you want to go work out at the gym because you think it's gonna give you a smoking hot bod and suddenly people are gonna be nice to you? Or do you wanna to go to the gym because you wanna be more physically active and be able to keep up with your kids so you can go and run around and have fun with them? Make sure that your goal is personal or it is not going to matter enough to you to stick with it. Lastly, the T stands for timely, as we mentioned, and this is just another way for you to measure, are you successful and is this achievable? Back to the old Aunt Selma wedding analogy, if her wedding is six months from now and you decide, I wanna lose 20 pounds by Aunt Selma's wedding, that's achievable. Or I wanna start by adding a serving of vegetables to dinner, for instance, for the next month and see how that goes. Then you know at that month you can check in and see, am I okay with this? Have I really adapted to this? Is this part of my routine? Do I wanna layer on something else? So timely is another measurement that's gonna help solidify your goal and allow you to see if you're being successful or not while also allowing you to determine, is this achievable? Okay, so a perfect example of a SMAPT goal that is fully fleshed out and ready to go. I am going to add a serving of vegetables to my dinner for one month because, and here comes the personal part, because I am so stopped up with poop that I cannot function normally. After you have made your SMART goal, it is now time for you to plan. Stop and think about if there's anything you need. This could be gym membership, or it could be clothing items, or it could be cooking utensils. Let's talk about my goal again. Let's say that I'm somebody who doesn't cut vegetables. I need a knife. I need a cutting board. Cool, we're done, that's all we need. These are the things you need to think about to prepare for, because if you just say, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z, and then you start it and you don't have your plan in place, it can set you up for failure. The third step is to write your goal down and place it somewhere that is visual to you on a regular basis. Why do I use my hands so much? I don't know. Is it annoying to you guys? I feel like it's annoying to me. From personal experience, I have made goals and I have literally forgotten about them. I don't know if it was subconscious or if it was on purpose, but if you write down your goal, and you put it like right next to your bed or on your mirror or on your refrigerator or somewhere where you frequently go and there's no way you can miss this goal, it will solidify it in your brain. It will remind you, hey buddy, you made this goal. We made this pact. Don't, don't uh, give up on us now. We can lose track of things. We can forget about the importance of things. And if it's not a constant reminder in your face, it will be a lot easier for you to reason your way out of keeping up that goal. Step four is the last step. We are finally here, my friends, and that is to share your goal with somebody that you love and trust, who you can get to agree to be your accountability buddy. Somebody who holds you accountable. Somebody that you can check in with and share with them your progress. Get a friend, a family member, a dog, a therapist, whatever, and talk to them about your goal and then ask them, I'm going to try to eat these vegetables for the next 30 days. Can I check in with you at like two weeks and then at four weeks? Just a quick phone call and let you know what I've been doing and if, I, if I'm successful or not. The point of this is to number one, hold you accountable. Number two, 
because from personal experience, again, I have achieved things where I didn't even realize they were great until I had my friend say to me, um, you just did X, Y, Z over this period. Like that's pretty stinking awesome. And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. I was awesome. I am totally awesome. So it helps to remind you that you're doing something great. It helps to keep you on your path. And sometimes if you're hitting a wall, that person might be able to offer suggestions or guidance that can help you break through that wall. If you skip all of this, at least get this step down because this will help you out probably more than anything else. So this time, this year, you are going to use principles that are backed by science to increase your likelihood of reaching those goals that you so desperately want to achieve. Step number one, make a goal that is smapped. <laughs> okay, everybody calm down. Everybody calm down, okay? Calm down, shh. Make a goal that is specific, measurable, attainable, personal, and timely. Once you've made that goal, Formulate a plan. Is there anything that you need? Are there people that you need to achieve this goal? Do you need support? Do you need running shoes? Do you need cutting boards? Once you figure that out, write that sucker down, stick it on your bathroom mirror, tattoo it to your forehead, but don't tell people that I told you to do that because then I'll get in trouble. I never said that. This is all for comedic value. Parody, parody, parody. Put it somewhere where you have a constant daily reminder of your goal. Once you've written it down, call up your friend, call up your dog, call up your therapist, your mom, your dad, whoever, who can be your accountability buddy. Last suggestion, do one goal at a time, okay? I am somebody who back in the day would say, I'm going to start eating less calories. I'm going to eat super healthy foods. I'm gonna make all my own foods. Also, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning at five in the morning and I'm gonna start running. And then I'm also gonna watch less TV. And I'm, I would just, the goals would just, there would be like 15 goals that I would make overnight and it was just too many. You can't change so many behaviors all at once. It's hard enough to change one behavior. So I know you're probably not gonna listen to me, but it's my suggestion. I'm just trying to help based on personal experience. So take it as you will. But I highly suggest you pick one goal, you make it easy, you make it achievable. And until you master that goal, do not move on to another one. That's all I'm saying, okay? So good luck, everybody. I hope y'all had a happy holiday season and stayed warm out there with all that insane freaking weather. Good luck on reaching your goals this year. If you enjoy this type of content where you are getting information about how to better your lives in a healthy way, or if you're just obsessed with like science and the human body and finding out what the myths are about nutrition, definitely subscribe, hit that bell which I think is so stupid because why do you have to do multiple things? Just follow, you should just be able to follow. Okay, that's a totally different rant. Anyway, subscribe, hit the bell, do all those things you gotta do so that y'all stay a part of the Let Me Learn Your family and just keep on learning. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Who cares?